With over 500,000 trees and shrubs already planted and growing, it's easy to forget you are in the city. We don't just say, we do. It's the Stain City Way. Why am I in such a great mood? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Real Talk on SABC3. The stage is yours. So if we had to ask your boss, uh, a colleague or a friend, or even someone you just met five minutes ago to describe you, what words would they use? Intelligent, rude, professional, well-dressed. Did you know that every time you interact with the world, you are no different to a billboard that is advertising a brand? Everything from the clothes you wear to the language you use, even points of view you share on social media platforms, uh, it's being scrutinized by everyone else. So the question is, are you doing a good job at your personal brand? Or could you benefit from a little rebranding? Today, we're going to step outside of ourselves and examine how we come across to other people as we learn about the importance of personal and professional branding. To kick off the conversation, I'm joined by brain and brand author Timothy Maurice. What's so, up? Can I call you Timzo? Timzo is good. I'm good with that. Timzo. So here's the thing. When people think brands, right, um, it's always, oh, that's for famous people. That's for either brands mm. like a, a cool drink or for famous people. Um, I, I, I know that's not true. So first off, can you break down that notion for me? You know, branding comes from this German word, brandier, which means to make an impression. So you can imagine, like, back in the day when they had cattle, they need to identify, to impress, and oh. to identify in. So I know who's who and where they're placed and so forth. That's just kind of the history of it. So all of us make an impression, right? Mm. All of us' story resonates somewhere. Like, somebody is thinking about your story right now, and they're somewhere smiling, thinking mm. about it. Or somebody's thinking about your story and the value of your business is going down. Mm. So your story sits in like it's burned, it's brandished into somebody's mind. And that's where it comes from. And it's very difficult to, is there a word called unbrand? Yeah, like, you know, this, this thing of rebranding yourself uh. is very challenging. Uh, that's what my second book is about. What do you do when you outgrow what you're known for? What do you do when you need to shift from a new brand? It's a challenge. All right, so four books in, right? Yeah, four books. Four yeah, books yeah. in and uh, millions of columns, uh, many talks that you've given around the world. Uh, <clears throat> surely when you started um, focusing on branding and being an expert, can I call you an expert? I, I have passion for this topic. Okay, being well-versed. Okay. Let's go for that. Yeah, yeah. Being well-versed in branding. That had to come from, uh, from yourself. It came from inside of you. Yeah. What did you look at yourself and think, wow, where's this brand going? Why am I here? Where do I want to be? And most importantly, how do I get there? You know, it started for me as a teenager. I, was, I had a crush on someone who did not notice me. I don't know if you've ever had that problem before. No, you haven't. <laughs> so, we, yeah. But for those of you in the same WhatsApp group as me, you know what I'm talking about. Uh. It was when you fully, fully, like, you know, obsessed over someone, they don't even see you. Uh. So I had been sort of downgraded because my family started struggling. My parents lost their job. I had a crush on a captain of the Chile just named Deborah Dalton. And she didn't even notice me. I wore the fake shoes at school. Like, everybody had on Jordans. Uh. I had on, you know how Jordan has this thing when it does like this? Mine was like this. <laughs> <laughs> so, true story. And, and uh, so I was seen as this kid that was struggling. And I went home one day and I told my mom, I said, look, I've run out of underwear. I need new underwear. Mm. And my mom was like, we need to make a plan because we don't have money for underwear. We're struggling. Mm. And um, I made myself some fake underwear, some, some, some Batman underwear. So I put the Batman logo on the back. I cut out an old T-shirt. And um, I took these, this, this underwear to school. I took mm. off my pants, put on my shorts. And um, in PE class, a couple loud kids saw that I was wearing homemade underwear. Homemade Batman. <laughs> Batman underwear. And then they brought everybody in the class over, and I thought I was done. I thought my brand was finished. And I knew that if this cheerleader saw that I, or heard that I had fake underwear or yeah. these Batman underwear, I was done. And it turned out that the kids loved them, and I took an order for 50 pair of underwear that day. But what happened was, everybody started treating me different. My story changed. I went from the 
poor struggling kid yeah. to the creative interesting kid. Yeah. And my and that set out that set me on a journey to want to know why are people so full of crap? How can my story have that much impact and mm. the shifting of it? So that's where it was it came alive in me. So how often are you self-reflecting on your brand? So in my latest book, I've broken the personal brand down into three bodies. Yeah. Body one is your internal, your, your values, your skill set. Body two is your image and how you project yourself. Yeah. Body three is your associations and how you appear on social media, everything you associate it to. Yeah. So I do a self-brand audit often. I'll check and see. Once often? Once a week? Once a month? It depends. Like now I'm about to go back to school. So I've studied so neuroscience. I'm interested in neuroscience and marketing. I'm, I'm going back to school at the end of the month, actually, to, to, to a school in the States. And mm. I, I'm, I'm constantly trying to upgrade myself. Mm. So every, literally every month or so, I'm looking at how do I sharpen the sword? How do mm. I look at each body? And I do break it down. And I feel like right now I need an upgrade mm. and to, in that body one. I feel like my body two is fine. I'm okay in that space. Mm. And my networks, my associations in body three and how I deliver those are, are fine. But I need to upgrade my knowledge base mm. in my body one. So here's the difficulty. And I know this is the difficulty for you know, for celebrities and I, the ones that I speak to and you know, you bounce off each other is the thing about having a, 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 a brand that lands on people and sticks to people is that it has to at least appear authentic or be authentic, yes. right? Yeah. So what's that fine line between us always sitting at a boardroom, you know, where are we taking brand Anele, and just me saying, it's fine, I'll just do the next thing that fits me, and I'll do the next thing that fits me, and I'll just do the next thing that fits me. What's the fine line that you have sure. to flirt with that? You know, for me, it's about saying, where do I want to drive impact? Where do I want my brand? I mean, if you look at someone like Trevor Noah, Im image is important, but how many people know he wears Xenia suits? No one really cares. Mm. You know, if you look at his comedy and how he drives and fundamentally shapes the work he's doing, you know, he's got in his mind, there are a certain type of association, there are certain platforms, there are certain brands I want to be associated mm. to. And the reason he would choose The Daily Show versus another platform because it aligns to who he is. Mm. So I think it's in those strategic meetings, if you are a public brand or if you want to be an influencer online, is to be thinking, where do I want to drive impact? Yeah. And then literally bring people and associations and people around in that space. And in that space, when you've got the framework together, just be yourself within the framework. Okay, so draw the border of... So it's more important to be saying... I wouldn't go there. Yes. So then you draw the border yeah. and the boundary and be like, I wouldn't go there and I wouldn't go there. So then once then you've drawn this, this country outline, then inside. Yeah, like I, I've written for Destiny magazine for nine years. Yeah. There are magazines I won't write for. Not that they're not good magazines, but I'm not aligned. So mm. I, want, I know who I want to speak to. And in, here's one thing I would suggest. Every single person who's an influencer or who sees yourself influencing, let's say you are a receptionist, yeah. know who your muse is. Who is it you're writing to? When I write for a publication like Destiny, I know exactly who I'm writing for. Yeah. She's, she's about 30 years old, I know the range. Yeah. I know she's curious, she's intellectual. Yeah. I have an idea of what that range looks like so that it lands, but if I'm writing for another publication, I also know. So I have my range, I know how I'm gonna pitch my content. Mm. Even on social media, I know who's following me. And now, fortunately, on, like on Instagram, you mm. can actually see the numbers. You can see if they're male, female, you can mm. have some idea of who you're following. Does success mean that your branding is good? Because surely your branding could be great, but it, you, you, you don't see it. For instance, <laughs> you use Trevor as an example. I've never considered Trevor to be somebody who's, who works on his brand. I just think he gets sure. on stage and he's funny and that sure. works out, yeah. right? So does your success you know, go hand in hand with your branding? Yeah, I, I think people, first of all, let me say this. I am frustrated with the term branding. Okay. I think we need to evolve the term. Okay. And I do think that if you've got two silos and you say, I've got my skill set and what I do for a living yeah. and I'm going to be damn good at it. Yeah. And yeah. the, the overemphasis on the position and spending all day on social media trying to position yourself and be right, focus on this other side and make sure that the frameworks are in place and so forth. 
it's like Trevor for me is the best example because you're absolutely right. But he has made smart decisions. Mm. He didn't have to take The Daily Show. Mm. That catapulted his narrative. Mm. Forget about branding, for example. What is his personal narrative? His personal narrative has just become this global voice, mm. and that is because he's made some strategic choices and along the way. But at the end of the day, I don't care. There are some comedians out there. You can put them on The Daily Show, they'll flop immediately. Yeah, yeah. Right? So at the end of the day, you have to be really good at it, and, and, and that's key. What I take from this nine minutes is that Branding is more about the choices you make as opposed to, you know, the plots that you have. So how many times have you heard people say, live your life and stop worrying about what others think about you? But when, that, when it comes to personal branding, is that always the best advice? Uh, let us know what your thoughts are. We need your 20-second voice notes. You know what you're saying them. After the break, personal and professional brand strategist Tracy Loverson joins in on the very riveting conversation. Don't go anywhere. And we're back and you with Real Talk on SABC3. So, party pics on Instagram, sexy videos on Snapchat, risque comments on Twitter, and offensive opinions on Facebook. These are some of the first things that a future employer could potentially learn about you as they go through your social media footprints to decide whether or not you would be good to their company. Yes, social media platforms are meant to be fun, but by now we all know that there's a certain level of responsibility that comes with what you share online. To add her expertise, the conversation is personal and professional brand strategist and CEO of Brand Unique, Tracy Leverson. Welcome to Real Talk. Hello, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. So, you know, I mean, you work in, in magazines. Uh, Tim, you know this. The, the narrative that always gets promoted is be who you are, don't care what people say about you. You know, the day you don't care about what people think about you is the day you're free. So if we're constantly being told that mm -hmm. and you know, told to believe that, then why does it matter as to what I do, what I post and what I look like? I think it matters a great deal, especially for your stakeholders. One, you need to look at yourself as a brand, mm -hmm. yes, and you need to be authentic. However, if there is a demographic or if there are stakeholders that you want to impact yeah. with your brand, with what you say, whether it's your employer, whether it's business partners, whoever well, it is. stakeholders could be your family. It could be your family, it yeah. could be your kids, it could yeah. be your husband, right? So you need, in as much as you need to be authentic, you just need to know what message is it that you're bringing across to them. Because mm. at the end of the day, yes, we need to be authentic to who we are, true to who we are, our brands and so forth, but we also need to be responsible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So before social media, Let's say, let's take the show, what we're doing now, and let's take it back 15 years before social media. Where would you have to be careful in how you're positioning yourself? Because now I can reach you so much easier. That's why you've got the ability, Tim, to say, scrutinize my brand. But 15 years ago, where was this happening? This, the, the, the market size for your brand was just much smaller. Yeah. Now we have this global platform called social media. But you know, the big thing is that you've got to break down your stakeholders. You've got low-level stakeholders. If you pass someone in the mall, mm. you shouldn't care what they think. Mm. Why do you care what they think? It does not matter. Then you've got your middle-level stakeholders where there's potential there. There's some association. It doesn't really matter what they think, but you kind of have to be careful. Mm. Then you have intimate-level stakeholders. Mm. These are your boss, your, your kids, your, your family. You've got to care what they think. You know the most powerful moment in branding, Anneli, mm. is when a child raises their arm <gasps> to a parent. That moment, what is that child saying? Your brand is, I know you got me. Yes. That is the most powerful moment in branding yeah. is that the yeah. story in their head is like, I know without a shadow of a doubt, you're not going to let me fall. <sighs> and that's what branding is about at the end of the day. It's like, who do you want that message to be positioned to in terms of your stakeholders? OMG, you just, you just, Beautiful. You just put my son does that. <laughs> he thinks I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're well branded on your son. <laughs> He thinks I'm all right. Very true. So the one thing that always, and it's almost when, I, when I'm on social media and I see, it, it, I get a little twitch when I, I just, you know, I short circuit a little bit. Yeah. When someone says the views here are my own and not my employers, I find it to be such a <laughs> dangerous statement because I, I don't think I'd ever work for a place where my views and their views cannot disagree properly. Yes. A am, am, am I, am I making 
nothing out of something, something out of nothing. No, you're making something out of something. Okay. So you need to be aligned. M many of my clients um, are frustrated with where they find themselves mm. in the workplace or so forth. And one of the first questions that I ask them is, what are your values? Mm. Have you ever checked what the values are of the company that you work for? Mm. So your, your values need to be aligned with whatever or whoever your employee is yeah. or your stakeholders yeah. are. It's of paramount importance. So if I'm going to say uh, I'm employed by Company X and these are my own views, remember I'm a representation yeah. of that brand. It, to me, it's almost like... You, you work at KFC, but you're like, but I like Nando's. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what it exactly. says to me. Because I don't, I don't mind that you work here and you enjoy something somewhere Correct. else. But saying these are my views, it's, it, and it's almost like your companies also absolve themselves of any responsibility mm. that you are going to. But, mm. but we, we're made to write these things. I mean, I, yeah. my, my company, they make us write it. Sure. Not SAPC, the other one. Yeah, 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 <laughs> they, yeah. It's just like, hey, guys, we're tired of getting into trouble because of you guys. Please, please, please write it. Mm. Uh, Tim, what's your feeling on this? You know, sometimes you're in survival mode. And sometimes there are people who are watching this show who are going, look, I'm just trying to feed my family. Yeah. And I am not aligned right now. That's almost a luxury. You get to a point where you can afford being aligned. There are just times when it's hard. Mm. And you know, when it's hard, you've got to say to yourself, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to do the best I can to get to the right place, but mm. that's when you got to be really responsible just to keep that job. And I just want to mention this quickly. There's a term in science called patternicity, which says that the patterns of your post mm. produce a picture. Mm. And I want everybody to go back and look at the patterns. What picture comes alive? Because it does. When you scroll through, mm. patternicity produces a clear idea of who you are. Mm. And what is that dominant narrative on your page? Mm. But at the same time, you know, to, to keep that spark every now and then, is it okay to just shock people? Just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I, I believe so. You need to, and that's... I mean, we're allowed to have opinions, right? Yeah. We're allowed to have an opinion. But again, Anela, I think it goes back to what we have discussed and touched on. Who is your stakeholder? Mm. Know that if I'm going to post this thing and I have to go back to work tomorrow, mm. my employee is going to see it. Mm. Or that person that I entered into a contract, a business contract mm. with, they're going to see it. Is this how I want to be viewed? Maybe what people should do is ask other people. So this is my view on X subject. Yeah. Do you think it's a good idea for me to post this? Yeah. Yes or no? Or should I just reword a few things? Mm. It's very important. I know, I know it's a big bank. I won't say which bank it is. Yeah. But I know a guy who did not get a senior position mm -hmm. because he posts happy socks all the time. The senior directors thought he was too flippant. He was not serious enough. So the fact that they saw on his Instagram a bunch of happy socks killed his brand in that particular business. Ooh. And he ended up having to leave that brand. Mm -hmm. Whether you think that's fair or not, mm -hmm. they had an association with Happy Sock that wasn't so happy. <laughs> <laughs> so we asked you uh, to send in your WhatsApp voice notes. What I love about this conversation is because I just, I, I don't want to make it about celebrities and their branding. The, we're talking to everyday people, nine to five people, you yourself. How is what you're doing going to take you to the next level and what decisions are you making to make sure that you're climbing your own ladder? Uh, let's go to the voice note. Hello, Anele. Yes. Uh, my name is Mrs. Mazibogo. I want to ask a question about like branding. Like I'm a brand like myself as a director of photography in the film industry, but I want to know how to grow my brand, like in the industry, so that I can get like um, gigs or jobs as a freelancer. And also, like I want to know how do I grow my clothing brand, you know, in this new era that we are in, like in the new generation that we are in. So like I want to know like those two things on how do I like what are they tips or the key things that one can grow his mm. brand? Well, personally, off the bat for me, the fact that there's two things is a problem. But that's, <laughs> that, but that's no, honestly, that's my personal opinion. I think from a personal note, you, I, I always believe you, you become an expert at one thing and you call us here for this sure. and then you say, oh, by the way, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 I'm wary of doing two things like this yeah, yeah, growing yeah. at the same time. Tracy, what's your take? I, I don't, I beg to differ. Oh, good, please. Um, I think he can do both simultaneous, simultaneously. Mm. Um, 
I think he just needs to marry the two brands um, so that the, the one can work for the other. Mm. So, um, I mean, it's clothing and photography. So he can take pictures of the clothing uh, label or brand, mm. get people who he wants to be associated with his clothing brand to model mm. or to post pictures and so forth. And I mean, there are many social media strategies that he can go about, but I don't think um, he's shooting himself in the foot if there are two Different okay, things what if, because I think the, the natural go-to place would be then, yeah. let me find somebody who's got lots of followers and take pictures of them in my clothes. What if somebody with lots of followers, or what if somebody who's well-known is not willing to partner with him? Do it yourself. So, uh, uh, Tim mentioned something earlier on, and you asked the question, does it mean, you know, when, if you're fam famous, yeah. you are good at what you do, or whatever it is, um, and I'm paraphrasing that question, it doesn't necessarily have to be somebody who's famous yeah. to wear your clothing brand. Start with where you're at. Start cre being creative and create a social media campaign on your own to be able to promote your brand. Yeah. Get out there and make your brand be seen by whoever it is that you want your brand to be seen. It doesn't necessarily have to be a social media or a, a famous person yeah. because they may not necessarily buy into your vision. Okay, Timothy. Be the first at something. Be mm. bold. Go and tackle a social issue. Mm. Create a storyline or a web page where you go and go, I'm going to do filmography in this particular space to address a social need. Mm. One of the things that Black Panther has shown is that if people tap into this sort of deep need to feel represented, mm -hmm. who needs to be represented? If you're gonna do a clothing range, do a clothing range that taps into people's souls. Clothing is a symbol that connects to people's soul. It's a much deeper conversation. So where's the voids in people's souls? Create something that feels and satisfies a thirst. And when you do that, and you're first at it, then people remember you. Be the first at something. Don't worry, you're staying here, so oh hold on God. to that thought. <laughs> Just 16. Timothy, Maurice, thank you so much. Thank you're you. always so amazing to talk to. Thank you. Really, you are. Good luck with your studies. And thanks for your brand. <laughs> ah, call us your graduation. Uh, <laughs> We say goodbye to Timothy Maurice after the break. We're in the company of South Africa's go-to guys by high-profile individuals when they need advice, managing their brand reputation. Rems Mabote shares his thoughts next. Stay with us. And welcome back to Real Talk. Today, I'm in the company of branding experts and we're getting some insights into the impact that our personal brands have on our interactions with others. The workplace is one of those environments where you cannot afford to make too many mistakes without serious repercussions. Our personal brands play a huge role in how seriously we're taken, how far we could progress, as well as whether or not our future in the companies we work for are secure. We now welcome to Real Talk a man who lists public relations, communications, and reputation management amongst his skills. He's also the host of Metro of Him Talk Mondays and Tuesdays at half past 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. His name is Rems Mabot. Hello, Anneli. And you I'm know, not wearing happy socks. You're not wearing happy socks, no. which, is, which is a good thing. So you're not going to get fired anytime soon. But I mean, quickly, 20 seconds. You and, you and I were on TV 11 years ago. We have a history. Tell you us. voted me out on of, the weakest of link. The weakest link. 2007. I'm still hurting. Uh -oh. But you, you do realize you were getting a lot of answers wrong. I got only one answer wrong. It's the only. And you guys ganged up <laughs> against me. It's all. It's you all. don't like intelligent people. I'm. I was, maybe I was jealous. Maybe I was jealous <laughs> of your brand. <laughs> Let's talk about being at work. You know, you find this this note this notice up at work. You know, uh, please can you watch your language? Yes. Right. How important is it to be that person who is? Because there's some environments where profanities are allowed. You know, you're just throwing, you know, the words around and, and, and other places that are not. How important is it to be perceived as somebody who just doesn't swear at work? I don't know how, how important it is not to swear at work. Yeah. I don't know how it, important it is not to offend others. Ah. So you need to be aware of your surroundings. You need, I need to know what matters to Tracy. Uh, so it's not, it's, when you're in a public space, it's never about you. There's no privacy anymore. It's all about your surroundings. Mm. And, and similarly, it's about where, where, where do you leave your dirty dishes? Mm. In my home, if I live alone, I probably will check them out tomorrow morning. But, but if I'm in other people's surroundings, I, I gotta be always aware of what, what is comfortable. I used to work in a newsroom. Mm. At 4.30 p.m. in a newsroom, profanity is 
are yeah. the only language we know at that yeah. time. And it's okay. Mm. So if you're a born again Christian, you probably won't survive very well in that space. And you probably have to adjust yourself to these guys, yeah. not the other way around. So I, I always think it's about adjusting yourself to the surroundings mm. more than anything else. I like that. It's not important whether you swear or not. It's important to who's around you yeah. and who you're offending, which means just be present. Just be aware. Always be present. Which is what branding is all about. Yeah. Who are you landing on? Ah. Not where you're taking off from. I'm so sorry I voted you out. Yeah, but you see? You see now. <laughs> Tracy, yes. uh, let's chat about the English language, right? Because we live in a country where there are so many languages and we will break English because English is not my first language. Like a friend of mine always says, hi guys, English came on a boat, please <laughs> leave us alone. Yes. But we can't ignore the fact that yes. English is regarded as intelligence. Yes. So where are we in that space? Because surely somebody, they feel that they hang ups in them not progressing is them not being able to be fluent in English. I think is, it's about how much do you want to advance in whatever surrounding it is that you find yourself. Yeah. For instance, um, I, my dad was Betty, my mom is colored. Yeah. When I was 11 years old, I moved to Butokwa. Uh -huh. I didn't know a word of Sipedi. Yes. All I knew was Afrikaans and English. Ooh. That's all I knew, hence the name, right? So oh. many people still can't place me. However, I had a desire to learn the language. And as a result, I have learned to be adaptable in whatever environment I find myself, right? Mm. Because I understand I need these people. I need to be able to interact with whoever it is that I find myself speaking with. Mm. So it's about how much do you want to learn the English language? Mm. And also understanding that there are some settings where you need to speak the English language, where we can't mix uh, and mm. use cross, uh, mm. don't, don't, mm. where you need to be professional if you want to be viewed as someone who is professional. It's very important. I've got a, a, a client mm. who's Lebanese that I coach, and I always remind them that the point is to communicate. So buy people's sympathies much earlier. Tell them, I'm Lebanese, my English is not good. Mm -hmm. From that moment, they're going to forgive you for your syntax, for your grammar, for mm. everything else. Tell people, because it came on a boat, mm. and you know, sometimes it didn't come past. But the point then, you must be very compelling. Well, you mm. must know your story. I yes. always insist, know your story. Yeah. Mm. English will be an enabler. Mm. Don't know the English first. You go, know, and your not story. know your story. Uh, the, then know it's your just story. an Oxford dictionary <laughs> with no sentence construction. <laughs> uh, your voice notes are coming through. Please make sure you're saying them to us. 20 seconds. Do you have a question? For, I mean, we've got experts here and they're not charging. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Roll it. Hi, Annalie. This is Valencia. I have a question for our guests today. My question is how important is the company you keep at work? Mm for your personal brand. Like that being said, your friends, your colleagues, how important is that circle for your personal brand? Oh, this, this is a, Valencia, you must just come sit here because that is a very good question. Finish. Trace. Yes. And it's such a, an important question, yeah. Anele. Birds of a feather flock together. Sorry. You need to find out, if in, in the setting that she spoke about was a company, right? Yeah you need to find out why you are there. If you are there to grow, to build your brand, to advance in the, in the company, listen to what people are saying about the company that you keep, or about the people in whose company that you often find yourself in. Yeah. Because you will also be painted with the same brush. Regardless of how good you regardless are. Regardless of how good you are. It's about building brands. Mm. You are at a company to build your brand, to build yourself so that you can better position yourself. Mm. So if every lunch hour we are busy gossiping about whoever, whether I'm good at what I do or not, trust me, I've been on the other side where we choose mm. who we place where. Mm. By power of association, if Tracy is always with that group that chitter chatters and that skinners about everybody, mm. I'm sorry. We've all heard about the concept you know, don't be that guy. No, don't be that guy. I actually say in the workplace, be that guy. Be that guy that does not have to, to fit in mm. with the wrong people. Yeah. Just be that guy. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's for your own good. Mm. Ultimately, your, your bosses are going to treat you as a person. And if other people taint you, you're That's affected. Right. So worry yeah. about you without, without, of course, being a snob or walking yeah. away. But, but you don't have to be to always walk out with the guys that walk out. We don't always yeah. leave at 4.30. Yeah. 
and I hope she doesn't leave at 4.30. Yeah. You know, I don't like the guys that leave at 4.30. Very true. Because um, for, from a personal observation is, I mean, you in radio, uh, the, the radio station, it's a revolving door. Mm. So, then I, so then you and I were friends, but you were troublesome. Then you get fired and I'm still there. Yeah. And then I remain mm. friends with you, which is fine. But you continue to slander the company <laughs> in public, yeah. but I'm still friends with you. How long am I going to have my job there? <laughs> Are you referring to a specific issue I'm dealing with now? <laughs> <laughs> Social media is such that actually it, it has happened in my space where yeah. for my colleague and in, in, on my timeline they would be saying stuff. Yeah. Look away. Look it's away. nothing personal. When I'm with them, I'll hug them and sympathize mm. and stuff like that. But look away. It's my, their issues and the boss, it's not my issues. It's absolutely not my issues. Yeah. And they must be mature enough to know that. And also, you leaving us, Tracy, but Final statement, it's okay to be selfish about your brand because this is what I'm oh, learning here, yes. is be selfish. You didn't go to be chummy chummy when it, it comes to building what is going to be your income. Not at all. You have to be. Mm. You have to be selfish about your brand because that is how people are going to perceive you. That mm. is what people buy into. Mm. So you need to know who you're spending time with. Where are you spending those time, th that time with? And with who? In what setting? You need to know there are places that you can't be seen at, especially office parties. Be careful what you do at those office parties Ooh. because Monday comes. Monday comes. Mm -hmm. Listen, a big thank you to personal and professional brand strategist Tracy Leveson. I am just... I'm so engaged by her, so engaged. Uh, she joined us today. You can catch the repeat tomorrow morning, uh, SABC 3 at 9 a.m. if you want to get this again and bring your notepad out this time. Coming up, have you ever said or done something that cost you a job, lost you friends and family, or made people lose all respect for you? After the break, we'll be taking a look at reputation management and how to rebrand yourself after having damaged your personal brand. Be sure to come back. And welcome back to Real Talk right here on SABC3. How often have you been shocked to hear or read about a high-profile individual who found themselves in the middle of a sexual assault scandal, being at the center of allegations of corruption or at the forefront of a racial incident? Inappropriate behavior that gets exposed publicly has a huge knock-on effect on people's personal brands that causes the kind of reputational damage that can be hard to come back from. In the event of a crisis, it is people like Rams Mabote who get called in as experts to do damage control. Do you like have a cape? Rams to the rescue. Well, I just have a sword. <laughs> <laughs> I cut things into, so into you, pieces, you know? So forget Black Panther. You are the original superhero. I'm the man. I'm You're, the kingmaker. You are the original there's, Black there's superhero. The, the kingmaker. The man. You've worked with politicians. You've worked with CEOs. You've worked with cabinet ministers. Uh, all about reputational mm. uh, damage, right? What does that involve? And most importantly, when does the work start? Do you, do you work with them, you know, just... Jay, prior to anything, so that when something happens, you've already got the systems in place? Ideally, it should be like that. Uh -huh. If we took our reputation seriously, people would keep people like me around all their lives. Uh. From, from the minute you got your job as CEO or the new minister that I appointed on Monday, they'll start be calling me. <laughs> but you know when they're going to call me? When things go wrong. Uh -huh. The good thing about that is that I tend to charge more at that time, you know? When, when things when are like bad, this, you, don't, you don't ask how much. You can yeah? get when more money out yeah, of a no, person who's doing you this. You just want the solution. You don't care how much the horse costs. Yeah, uh, so I, I like them at that time. Uh -huh. Preferably, though, it's better to manage your reputation before things go wrong. And we're all human. Mm. Uh, messing up is an equal opportunity thing. We're all going to mess up at some point in our lives. Yeah. We will. And we'll repeat. Yes. We'll do another mess up. It's, it's just human. Yeah. It's how you come out of it, how you come back from it. And... One of my greatest examples in life has to be the late Brenda Farsi. Yes. I think she, she could have written a book about her, how she bounced back again yeah. and again and Was again. that not talent, though? You know, she just had a, 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 a well of talent that she could always land on it. I was going to speak about that to say it is important to know, again, it, I sound like a broken record, to know your story. When mm. you know your story, we tend to forgive you because of, of your story. Mm. Everything else is like... It's okay, but she, she's good. Mm. Eh? We, we know, but she's good. Mm. So she mm. was good. She kept on coming back, recording, and going on stage, and we forget. Mm. We forget that she went naked at some point. We forget that she did this. She mm. saw it somebody else. So mm. if you know, if you've got a product mm. or a service that you offer and you're good at it, we're likely to forgive you more. 
But how do people do it? Because there are some where, where you think, okay, they're not coming back from this. And then it's just, it's almost like their bums are made out of rubber. They just bounce back. <laughs> There's also an element of people forgiving. We, we're a forgiving people. Which is good. People do forgive. Which is good. And it's, al it al it's also important to ask for forgiveness. It's also important to say, I made a mistake. I'm hum without arrogance. The problem with these people called celebrities, none of whom I know, <laughs> uh, is, is that even when they apologize, they're There's almost saying, uh, you know, but you didn't understand me, but I'm going to say I'm sorry anyway. Uh, be, I'm sorry, be genuine, but... Be genuine. Don't only apologize. Be show that you're trying to do something to correct that which you did wrong. Sh you must convince me that I'm actually making some effort, some amends, uh. to make sure that this doesn't happen again. Could could I go and wash your shoes? Could mm. I go and, and clean your house? Not literally, but do something to show that I made a mistake. I'm going to make amends because I'm human. I'm sorry. So you would say if the apology is not going to be sincere, you advise against it. I, I refuse that you make an apology if it's not sincere. Okay. And I will test you again and again and again to make sure that it is a sincere apology. Okay. And you must never say, I said I'm sorry. Oh, ooh. No, you, you can't say that. Ooh. What? But obviously the situation in which you'd have to be saying, I said I'm sorry, is people are still nitpicking and at you. they will you. do that, and they'll do that on social media. Yeah. In fact, once you've apologized, I would suggest that stay away from social media for a while. You're <laughs> going to get trolls, and they'll make you angry. You're going to get for, triggered. For, for a while, forget about them. You've apologized in the right platforms. Stay cool. Mm. It's never about you. Okay, to wrap it up, values, integrity, visibility. And purpose, man. Okay. You know, when you got purpose, it becomes easier in life. These are things that you always harp on about and you're continuously talking about them. All the time. W values, integrity, visibility, and purpose. Which one is most important purpose. for you? Purpose. Purpose. When you know your purpose, everything else becomes easy. Mm. Yeah. Rams, you are absolutely effortless. You, 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 do you have this calming effect. I don't pay you enough. <laughs> <laughs> you really have this, everything is going to be okay. And it always comes back to be okay. Ne? It does, all the time. Is that the first thing you tell all your clients? All the I tell them, do not worry, it's going to be okay. Yeah. At this moment, it looks so terrible, everybody seems to be hating you, it's going to be okay. Breathe. Yeah. Breathe. Rhymes my bottom. What is the one thing that has people formulating opinions about the kind of person you are before you even open your mouth? Dominique Wolf is here and she will tell us next. Welcome back to Real Talk right here on SABC3, where the stage is yours. They say that even before you've uttered a single word to introduce yourself to a stranger, they've already sussed you up and down and made conclusions about you simply based on what you're wearing. Dominique Wolf is a personal stylist and corporate image consultant who runs The Style Coach, and she's about to give us some insights into how what we wear speaks volumes to others. We're also joined by Yoli San Dinisa, a marketing communications manager who sought Dominique's services when she was worried that she was starting to look a bit too casual at work. Now, Dominique, I must just tell you, I picked my outfit. Because you know you get told, just if you, when, you, when you're not sure, just pick a solid color and stick to it. I think I agree with that, <laughs> as you can see. <laughs> right? It's working well for both of us, I think. Uh, what, what advice do you give? Sorry, you and I were about to speak at the same time there. What advice, what's the first piece of advice you give to someone who comes to you and says, OK, I, I need to do something about my image? Because the first thing is, what we're trying to do with, with all of the processes with style consulting and, and style coaching mm. is we are trying to bring out that person's personality and what they're wearing. Uh. So the first thing to do is for me to get to know them a little bit before we can decide how to, how to proceed with the process. Uh -huh. So I'm so glad you brought somebody that you've worked with here because it's almost like you're, this is my exhibit day. Eh? Yeah, <laughs> right? Yoli, so why did you go to Dominique? Um, so I think I was struggling a little um, with my corporate environment. I, um, I was dressing too casually for work and and though we, we don't have a very strict de dress sense, um, I, feel, I feel like I was a little on the casual side. Yeah. And I really wanted, um, being in the late 20s, you kind of want to change that brand, mm. you know, coming out and you, know, you want to get more, more serious mm. with the way that people take you in the corporate environment and with the way that you take yourself, you know, what you project out to people mm. is very important. So, um, which is why I uh, met with Dom and, it's been... So how much time did you spend with her before you... I like the way you look, by the way. Thank you. Well, how Thank much you. time did you spend with her? <laughs> so 
Well, I met with her at her office. We had a brief, brief chat and a brief consultation, and then I met with her at her home. Uh. And that, for me, is the most intimate place of a woman, in a, one of the most intimate yeah. places in a woman's life, and where you get to know people very quickly. So we go through, we went through her things. It took Did about you chuck an out hour. Stuff? Only about, only about three things, but to be fair, she doesn't have a massive wardrobe. Uh. But it was a great way for me to see what she needed, how to fill in the gaps, and also where she is in her life stage. And I think that's the one thing with style, which mm. is always important. Your life, your, your style changes as your life goes. I mean, when you have a baby, as you know, yeah. when you become a parent, your body's changed. When you change jobs, the life stage is very important and critical in how we style you after that. Mm. So you, it's critical for you to spend time with the person. Let's say I come sure. to you, I'm like, don't help me. What's, what's critical for me to happen? in order for you to be successful. Do I have to surrender myself to you? <laughs> Not at all. I think you need to be honest. I yeah. think you need to be honest about the way you're feeling about your style. I think you need to be honest about what you like and what you don't like. Because the last thing I ever want to do is recommend something to somebody mm. when they hate it. And they feel like they have to wear it because I've said they have to. Uh -huh. Which, is, which is, goes back to what I was saying earlier about it's about bringing your own personality out in what you wear. Yeah. So if you absolutely love yellow, but it really doesn't suit you, you can still wear yellow in your shoes and in a handbag. You know, you can add trends to your to your wardrobe without but you can't be the yellow brick wearing, road. <laughs> exactly and it's the same with animal print you do not want to be that animal you just want don't to be have that girl. Yeah, exactly <laughs> don't be that girl so yoli so obviously you had like a style icon right somebody that you want to emulate and how far away from who your who, what your style is were you from who your style icon was so I actually don't have a style icon. Okay, good. I, I really walked, when Dom and I met, it was literally do what you think works with me. Mm. So, um, and I still wanted to keep who I really am. Mm. Um, I, I didn't have a style icon at, mm. icon at all. It was, it was literally just, this is me and work on it. Dom, I love examples. This is why I'd like for you to come back so we can do this at a like for a lengthier time where you can we do before and after. I would absolutely love and it. And then maybe we can bring some of my clothes out here so <laughs> you can help that. me out. Well, let's, let's do you. Okay, we're doing <laughs> me. Dom, where can we find you? Um, either email dom at thestylecoach.ca.ca or my Instagram handle is thestylecoachsa. The Style Coach essay. Well, that is where we'll leave it for today. Thank you so much to my guests. This was a riveting episode. Timothy Maurice, thank you for your time. Tracy Laverson, thank you for your time. Rams Mabote, Dominic Wolf, as well as Yolisa. Now that you have the necessary tools to start thinking about how you come across the world, go out there and put your best foot forward. Uh, as we make our way for Isitingo, be sure to join us tomorrow. We are talking about a heavily contested issue uh, affecting many moms out there, breastfeeding in public. The sides are such polar opposites that the line is right down the middle and we're going to be discussing it tomorrow at 6 p.m. Make sure that you do not miss it. From the team and myself, Anele, good night.